Hi there. Today I wanted to talk about being liked. I've had some questions about reputation, winning over people and then losing their trust. And I thought I would like to share some ideas on how you can build a better reputation for yourself and possibly even restore and eliminate a bad reputation, which we've talked about before is very difficult to eliminate, but certainly not impossible. You can win people back and earn their trust once more. The first thing I wanted to talk about is very straightforward. It's something referred to as conversational generosity. In other words, when you're talking with others, letting them speak more than you speaking, and also asking more questions. When you ask people open-ended questions about themselves, more often than not, they love to answer them and talk about themselves. But you also need to practice active listening and make sure you're listening to what they're saying so that you can f ask proper follow-up questions and relevant follow-up questions as you go. And as you practice conversational generosity, you might find people saying things like, wow, this was a really great conversation, even though you did very little talking at all. Or thank you for listening. That's how you know that you are putting this principle into practice is when people say things like that. The second thing is adding value to people. So often people will send me an email, reach out to me about possible guest post opportunities, business opportunities, partnerships, things of that nature. And not all of them are necessarily going to be beneficial and some of them are a good fit, some of them are not. But when people are reaching out, some are very good at it and have me in mind when they do that reaching out. <laughs> Many others, however, do not have me in mind. Sometimes their emails or messages aren't even addressed to me. So can I assume it's not for me? Or can I assume it's a form letter? I think it's a pretty safe bet. Also, maybe the content of their message or email is all in favor of themselves. It's beneficial to what they want and the goals they want to achieve, but not beneficial to me in any way. So if you're reaching out to people and trying to communicate with them, you have to keep those two things in mind. First of all, you must address it personally to them, make it relevant to them. And then you also have to think about what's in it for them. And only then will you be able to begin to add value to them. And as you add value to those people, you begin to notice that your relationships get better and thrive. But communication is really the cornerstone of all relationships. And without good communication, that relationship will not grow and thrive. The next point is to smile more often, especially if you're going to something like a networking event, smiling at people, shaking their hands, and again, putting those other things into practice practicing conversational generosity, asking about them, where they're from, what they do, and then adding value to them. If you can connect them with other people or send them an article that's relevant to their industry. Or if you know about a cool resource online, maybe a YouTube video or a website that you've come across that they would find helpful to send it over to them. Smiling is huge. It projects a lot of confidence and it also puts other people at ease. Number four is to become more dependable and reliable. So I would encourage you to show up at meetings on time. If you have a commitment or you've promised your friend that you're going to meet him at the movie theater at eight, show up on time. And if possible, show up early. And this always gives people a positive impression about you that says, oh, this person is dependable. They've shown up consistently on time for this engagement or this meeting or their job even, then that's about taking proper responsibility for your various commitments in life. I've found that becoming a dependable person does make me more endorsable. And I think showing up on time and saying yes is a passing grade in school and in most jobs. If you want to excel, you need to go beyond just showing up on time and saying yes, but it's an excellent starting point. People want to know that you can be counted on, so don't be flaky. Number five, this is very difficult. Avoid arguments. You may disagree with many people and their facts may be totally off, but resist the temptation to correct them in the moment and don't participate in arguments. Arguments, unfortunately, 
are not a win-win, they're a lose-lose. It's not good for either party. So if you have opposing views to what's being said, keep it to yourself. And maybe dig deeper into why that person believes what they believe. Just ask them questions like, oh, that's interesting. That's a very unique perspective. I'd love to learn more about it. So why do you feel that way? A question like that will tell you more about who that person is, what they represent, and what they believe. And that's more beneficial to you because you begin to understand them. But it doesn't mean that you're going to have to work with them in the future or collaborate with them in the future. You still must choose the right people to be in your life because you want supportive people and helpful people in your life. So you want to associate with those people. But I would encourage you also to treat everybody well. Finally, I would encourage you to read the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And it sounds a little bit salesy, a little bit scammy almost. Great book. My friends in the Middle Coast band swear by it. I've read it two or three times and I highly recommend it also. And it'll teach you about how to improve all of your interactions and relationships with the people you have. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a comment below and let me know how this video helped you. See you again soon.